for being a part of this wonderful meeting that Denise and I have put on. And uh, welcome from, we've got people around Australia. We've also got a couple of people, well, we've got one lady from the US, Felicia. So welcome, Felicia. We've got a couple from New South Wales. So we're the New, New South Wales people. Yay. And the Victorians, go the Victorians. Um, so we're excited to be here, Denise. I just, I guess, wanted to, um, I think now is a wonderful time to really focus on your health and well-being. I, I truly believe that, um, you know, we, we're in an interesting time and I don't want to dwell too much on COVID-19. That's not what this is about. But I think now is a, is a wonderful time that if we can create some great habits that we can... Uh, will help us stay strong, build our immune system throughout COVID-19. Then beyond COVID-19, we're going to be rock and rolling, ready to to live an abundant, happy, healthy life. And that's really what today's about is, is just to give you some ideas. So thank you again for being here. Um, it's we, we don't want to overdo it. And I know you've probably been... Um, how many of you have been on Zoom calls and video conferencing for the last few weeks? And it's like, you know, your eyes are turning square. Uh, I understand that. So we don't want, this is not going to be a long drawn out event. This is going to be short, sharp, punchy. We're going to give you some cool tips. And then at the end, we're going to open it up for a bit of a forum so we can ask questions and chat and converse. So, um, so just to give you a little bit of my background, I've got 30 years in the health and wellbeing industry. I was a personal trainer for 15 of those years and now I'm an author and a speaker uh, and, and very, very passionate about helping people live their best life. I like to call it a life of joyful longevity and that means, for me, that means living beyond 100. Happy, productive, loving life. Anyone up for that? Yay, yeah, good. Thumbs up. Thanks, Anne. Um, and, and Denise also has been in the... Uh, the industry for a long time, decades. She'll tell you her background, but she's she's got a very successful training business, and and she's now inspiring lots of people. And there are people on this, on this call that that know Denise very well, and and the amazing work she's doing to help people live their best life and be healthy and happy. So we're going to start, and I'm going to um, I'm going to hand it over to Denise. We're going to tag team a little bit here, and we're going to go through different things. And the goal of today is to help you find your immunity idol, which means build your own immunity so that, you know, in my definition of immunity means protect yourself. You know, we are protected no matter what's thrown at us. We can't be harmed. We're good. So we're going to try and protect our minds, our hearts and our bodies. And that's what today's all about. So I'm going to hand it over to Denise. Thank you, Andrew. Um, yes, good morning, everyone. My name's Denise McKenzie, and I'm um, a personal trainer and health coach, and I've been doing that for about 10 years. Prior to that, I was an intensive care nurse for about 15 years at the Children's um, in neonatal intensive care. And I guess I've always loved helping people find their optimal wellness, but after spending so much time in the hospital setting and sort of seeing that it is quite reactive um, I really wanted to change the focus to a, a proactive um, approach and just stop people from getting sick in the first place rather than trying to you know catch the wheel after it sort of had already you know started spinning so and that's a little bit more of a challenge because generally people won't do things unless something has become a problem but if we can educate people well enough that we know certain things lead to certain outcomes but by living a healthier lifestyle um, and implementing lots of things, really easy, simple strategies, we can avoid a lot of these sort of chronic conditions. Um, so that's really where my focus is mostly now, um, and particularly as I've got two teenage boys growing up and the younger one had a lot of sort of health issues when he was little and the discovery of trying to just make him be able to live an optimal life really opened my world up to so many more things rather than the sort of conventional medical stream. Um, and there's so much we can do holistically and every part of our life really affects our health and well-being. So I sort of really take a holistic approach. And I guess that's a, a good segue to start with this um, talk today because the first thing that we want to discuss is how our environment really affects our immunity. So we're going to just talk about how we can just feel good with 
um, finding that immunity idle. And there are lots of things that we can do to do that. Environment is a huge one. So if we consider firstly, what is immunity? It's a, a quite a complex system that protects us from viruses, bacteria, parasites, and other pathogens. And our body is basically built for health and survival. So all of these factors um, come under the direct influence of the environment. And currently as we're facing this COVID pandemic, our, our immune system is under quite a lot of stress, but our immune support strategies have become even more critical to support our body and prevent health and illness, especially at this time. Um, through this presentation, you'll learn the importance of how, what those strategies are and how it is that we really need a balanced immune um, system. Often you'll hear at this time how to boost our immunity, but we don't actually want to boost it. We don't want it to be at a higher level. We want to find a balanced immune response. And um, there's lots of ways that we can do that through um, environmental factors. Mostly they're, they are external. Um, so things such as the sunshine, air, water, chemicals that we put on our bodies and who we live with as well um, are major factors in affecting our immune response. Anything that comes into our body as foreign um, is called a, like a pathogen or an antigen. And our body makes um, a response to these antigens in, in a number of ways. Um, so also the internal factors such as our body systems are also under the influence of the f fuel that we feed it both mentally and physically. And we've got a lot of control um, over that as well. So antigens are a substance that are considered to be the invader. And when the body recognises this foreign material, um, an immune response is initiated. Antibodies are the type of protein that can then lock on to these antigens and stop them basically from harming us. And one of the problems with uh, the COVID is that we don't have antibodies against this pathogen because it's a new virus to us. So we haven't been exposed to it before to create these anti um, antibodies. And so it really comes down to the person's overall health and well-being, how quickly you can make that response. Um, and once you've got the immunity, it stays with you forever. So usually you don't get that illness again because our body has a very good memory um, of immunity. And that's, that's our direct activation of the immune response. Um, it can be adaptive or acquired. So you can actually be born with an innate immunity and that's just something that's passed down um, genetically that gives you that inborn um, protection against virus. Um, it could be passive, so through um, a mother's breast milk um, or active immunization such as a flu shot and things like that. So there's lots of ways that we can sort of build our immunity externally as well as the internal response to that. Um, and as I said before, our immune system is very complex and it can get out of balance and become uh, compromised such in the case of immunodeficiencies or audio, autoimmune um, conditions, which was what my son was experiencing. Um, hypersensitivities and all of these can then compromise our immune system. But um, even if you don't have any of these immune system problems, environmental factors can make you more or less vulnerable, which then makes you either, your recovery either more or less difficult. So we want to be able to optimise um, an you know, a, a, um, adequate response to foreign invaders in our body. So an underactive or overactive immune system can cause problems. That's why we don't really want to sort of talk about boosting an immunity. We want a balanced immune system. So some of those things that we can balance our um, immune response with is things like sunshine. So it's really, these things sound really basic, but the thing is um, we, we do need to go back to basics and we find the answers there quite often. So sunshine's really important because of the vitamin D um, exposure and production that our bodies make. Our immune system is largely in the lymph nodes um, and bones. So the T cells come from, from the thymus and live sort of in your, in your lymph glands. And the B cells, which are another very big immune 
um, cell uh, from your bone marrow. So vitamin D is very important in the link there with um, the bone connection. Fresh air uh, is really essential as well, just breathing the fresh air, getting the, the lungs really expanded. Um, and not only that, but just from mood setting as well, you know, when you're cooped up all day, just going out and getting some fresh air just makes you feel so much better. Um, and so that's going to help reduce stress. And if we can reduce stress, um, we're going to have put energy into our immune response much better. Um, breathing in fresh air will just help purify the lungs as well. And that's, that's another surface of um, entry into the body. So our skin and our lungs um, are the sort of areas where something can enter into the body. So, you know, th that's important. You might even want to consider an air purifier or something like that into uh, a small enclosed area or the home to help just purify air as well, just to boost that. Um, but it can just be as simple as opening the doors and windows through the day and or having living plants inside the house. And grounding is a really another a good one for um, just earthing ourselves. So not often do we walk around with bare feet, especially as it's starting to get cold, but just getting connected to the ground either through walking or standing on dirt and grass or sand can help improve our physical and mental health as well. With this time being quite limited, we can still actually get outdoors so it might just be the front step or the backyard or you know the street but there's still very good options for finding that grounding and connection with uh, the environment so that pretty much concludes the um, environmental part and i'll hand over to andrew for the next bit thank you thanks denise that was really good and i think and um, you know, I think the environmental things are massively important. We're surrounded by an environment and we need to you know, make the most of our environment. I just want to endorse what Denise mentioned about, you know, because we are inside a lot, I think looking at something that will purify your air inside, considering that we breathe 24 seven and we're always breathing in and there's a lot of stuff in our homes that probably don't need in our bodies. Um, so looking at some sort of air purification and, and water purification are two good ways as a first step to really start to, to purify your environment. So um, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to start, my first little section is all about mindset, immunity, immunity. And um, Denise spoke very much about the um, sort of the, the real scientific clinical definition of immunity. But um, to me, immunity is just being protected. You know, if, if, we, if we're looking at just a real general definition of immunity is, to me, optimal well-being. You know, if you're optimally healthy, you're going to be immune to, to most of the things that could potentially harm you. And the first place we all have to start is mindset. And I talk about the fact that I believe well-being, physical, uh, physical well-being is 100% mindset. And people will disagree with that. You might disagree with that. You might say, well, what about food? And what about exercise? And what about breathing and water and all those things? And yeah, you're right, they're important. But you don't do anything. We don't do anything that we don't first think about. So there's no action that we take that doesn't first start as a thought. And this is to look at it, um, I guess, from a, a bit more of a structured point of view. This is how it all works. I mean, I, I talk about, I mentioned joyful longevity. So... You know, living a long, happy, healthy life is, for me, is, is the goal, certainly for me, and to help as many people as I can. Tears of joy, tears is an acronym. So to me, tears of joy represents a, a wonderful life. When you've ever, if you've ever had a, tear, a crying response to something that's actually joyful, that just means it's incredibly important to you. So we're going to talk about success as being strong immune system, happy, healthy, living a wonderful life, okay? And, and that's obviously the goal for all of us. But remember this, you'll never achieve a success by chance. It won't happen. Um, you won't what, go to bed one night and wake up the next day lean, fit and healthy. Um, there's no tablet that you can take that'll, you know, make you fit. Uh, we wish there was. We wish I could oh, Sometimes I wish I could take a tablet. Sometimes I wish I could go to bed and imagine being lean, fit and healthy, wake up the next day and not have to exercise and not have to do anything. But 
the reality is any success or result we end up with is the result of a routine or a habit that we create. I think we would all agree with that. Um, you know, if you eat well regularly and consistently and you exercise every day and you, and you think positive thoughts and, and you drink good water and you eat the right foods consistently, would, I mean, you'd all agree that the result we're going to end up with is going to be a positive result. So really, it's, everything's about the routines we create. But you never start a routine without an action. You know, you've got to take that action first. So getting out of bed and going for a walk is an action. And if it's not a habit or a routine, it takes a lot of focus, right? Like it doesn't just all of a sudden, yay, I feel like exercising. Well, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I rarely feel like exercising when I wake up in the morning, but I do it every day. Why? Because it's just an unconscious habit for me now. And that's, and that's critical, but it has to start with an action. Now, every action that you take will be will be preceded by a feeling or an emotion and the, that emotion is the most important part of what i'm going to talk to you about right now because it's the emotion a positive emotion if you leave this session today go yeah i'm fired up i want to get in shape um i feel great i feel positive i feel yeah i feel like i've got some you would probably go and do some walk, uh, go for a walk or do some exercise. You might go and eat, make yourself a healthy lunch. Um, when you feel good, you take a positive action. When you don't, when you feel anxious or scared or fearful or angry, think about some of the actions you've taken as a result of that emotional response you know if you've ever eaten chocolate or you've drunk alcohol or you've hit the snooze button instead of getting out of bed if you've ever spoken to somebody in a way that you would normally speak to them in a way that you regret it's always as a result of that emotion yeah now the other thing about emotion and this is a critical thing around immune system your body is so wired to your emotional state that there are there are multiple physiological responses to emotion and what emotion does, if you have any negative emotion, anxiety, fear, anger, resentment, bitterness, any of those emotions, uh, even for five minutes, it can shut down your immune system for hours. So immediately your immune system shut off. Uh, a negative emotion can impact your DNA and, sh and damage DNA. It can impact brain health and start the process of brain damage. It increases cortisol activity in the body it increases free radical activity in the body that's the that's what emotion negative emotion can do on the flip side positive emotion will strengthen immune immunity will strengthen brain health will will strengthen dna will reduce free radical activity and cortisol activity and balance that all up so that it keeps us healthy so can you see the most important part of this process is emotions. So the question is, where do emotions come from? Do we just feel something? You know, I was just angry, so I did this. No, everything starts with a thought. And this is why mindset is the most important thing. A thought is something that you comes into your head or comes to you, but you choose to focus on it. So a thought, a perception, or a belief that you choose to focus on will always lead to an emotion. So if you go, yeah, yeah, but he doesn't understand me, I, I can never get in shape, I'm no good, that's going to probably lead to an emotion of disappointment or anger or frustration or anxiety, which will probably lead to more inactivity than activity. Would you agree? Whereas if you go, no, no, I can do this, I'm... You know, this time I'm going to really make a difference. I'm going to get things going. I can do this. I'm good enough. If you start with that perception or belief, then the emotion is positive. You're likely to get into action. You repeat the action over time. It becomes a routine. Success and health, well-being is predictable. hope all that makes sense. And because I'm going through this quite fast. Because here's the reality. Um, look, I'm guessing that... <laughs> Unfortunately for the you guys that are on this call, you're probably already doing the right things. But how many people do you know that you go, gee, I wish they would make some changes? So maybe you can share this information with people. Changing your health will change your life, but it starts in your mind. Now, what do I mean by changing your health changes your life? Well, everything is intimately connected to our health and well-being. Everything. 
our relationship with our kids, with our family, our productivity at work, the things that we enjoy in life. You know, Felicia's just been telling us that she's been riding, I don't know how many hundreds of miles on bikes and, you know, um, that's all impacted by her energy levels and her health and well-being. She wouldn't be able to do it if she didn't have her health and well-being. So at the end of the day, your health is the foundation upon which everything that's important to you stands. And I want to just give you a, I want to introduce you to someone uh, who, when you get this in your mind, everything changes. Because I believe we all know what we should be doing. We know what we should eat. We know we need to exercise. Whether we do it or not, that's another thing. But there's a trigger point for everyone. And I just want to talk to you about Paul. Paul's a guy that goes to the church that I go to. And Paul was not a healthy man. Paul weighed about 125 kilos, was on double dose of blood pressure and cholesterol medication, and was on the verge of stroke and was not a healthy man. And he'd been that way for a long time. He came to me one day at church and said, I need to change. And I asked him the question. I said, so why now? You know, after all this time. And, and when I asked him that question, he started to get tears in his eyes. And he started to talk about, um, if you look at see that picture on the left, he couldn't get off the ground without a lot of effort. On the picture on the right, he's there with his grandkids. And his grandkids, he could sit and read to them, but that's about it. He could never play with them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even ask him. He, would, <clears throat> he never had the energy or the mobility to do that. And for him, I could see it when he started talking about, I just want to be able to play with my, kid, my grandkids. I could see that emotional response. Now, that's all he needed. That's all he needed to go, what do I need to do? I told him a lot of the stuff we're sharing today, and he just did it. Six months later, six months later, and this is two years ago now, he, um, he was 35 kilos lighter. He's off blood pressure medication and cholesterol medication. Uh, that picture there, that amount of meat, that's 30 kilos of meat on that spit. That is less than what he lost. So he lost more weight than that in six months. And he's kept it off and his, his life is totally transformed. But it was all, it wasn't about what he did because he knew what he had to do. He just needed the why to get him to do it. The thought, the, the emotional response that got him into action. So the question I want to ask all of you is, do you know why your health and well-being is critical? Do you understand that it's the foundation upon which everything stands everything that's important and what is it that will get you doing maybe doing the things that you don't necessarily want to do or you're not currently doing so two minutes and i'm i'm, I'm going to just have a breather um if then we're basically saying that everything's mindset everything everything starts with a thought then we need to protect our thinking would you agree with that so so we need to be very, very aware of who we're associating with, who we're talking to. Are they positive and encouraging people in our lives? Are they negative and critical? Because everything that, we, that goes into our brain is going to impact our thinking, our emotional response, our actions, our habits, and therefore our results. So what are you watching? What, what are you watching? And, you know, we, we're in a time where, unfortunately, too many people are running to the news to get the update. That's not the place... I recommend people spend a lot of their time. You know, you can get more reliable updates. You don't need an update every hour. Once a day will do it. You want to be watching positive stuff. What are you reading and what are you listening to? Podcasts and positive audios and amazing books. Feed your mind with things that will uplift you and empower you and build your thoughts to give you positive emotional state, which is going to strengthen and balance your immune system. Because what you put into your brain is what's going to come out predictably. Mindset, critical, critical stuff. So um, back over to you, Denise. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's so true. It's really, it all starts in the mind, doesn't it? If we can get that right, then, you know, it's no prizes for guessing. We all know what we need to do. It's the minute you can trigger how to actually do that and bridge that gap between knowing and doing is where the success lies. So, um, yeah, thanks, Andrew. That was awesome. You will know that getting poor sleep on a regular basis just leads to increased stress. 
and higher inflammation, lower immunity. It's we've all had really, you know, times where we've had very poor sleep and you just know how you feel the next day. It's very hard to tolerate people, you know, you're short fused. So definitely getting better sleep is going to be high on our um, high immune functioning radar as well because sleep restores our body and it restocks our immune system. In addition, sleep is really important for resetting our microbiome and a, a large percentage of our immune response resides in the gut. So if we can sleep well, which is going to improve our gut function, then the ongoing effect from that is also a boost in our immunity system. Um, remember the last time you had a flu or something, you just feel miserable, you know, the runny nose, achy bones, tired, sore throat. What do you want to do? All your body wants to do is put you in bed. It's really the only thing you want to do. It's forcing you to just rest so all the energy can go into repair and get those T cells and all the immunity cells really firing up to make you well again. So um, that's why sleep's really important. Also, um, there's a very big and intimate relationship between the sleep and your immune system because of these gut factors and also um, the drive of the par parasympathetic nervous system. So when we're really active and running around, your sympathetic nervous system fires up and it, there's a drop in the parasympathetic nervous system. Now the parasympathetic nervous system is the one that allows us to rest and digest. So that's the one that we want firing up when we're not well, because um, that'll give us the most optimal response. Um, and so getting that regular sleep consistently is going to help that. There's been lots and lots of studies with um, sleep and immune responses. In 2002, it was demonstrated quite profoundly um, with a flu vaccine in a study of relatively at, um, healthy adults. They were separated into two groups. One had their sleep restricted to only four hours a night for six nights, and the other group were allowed seven and a half to eight hours of sleep. At the end of the six days, everyone was given, um, they, they agreed to it, I know that you would agree to it, but they were given the uh, flu um, shot. And in the days afterwards, the researchers took blood samples and to determine how effective these individuals were at generating an antibody response um, and how um, effective the vaccine was. And in the participants who obtained the more sleep in the week before getting the flu shot generated a much more powerful antibody reaction. Um, and in contrast, those that slept less had 50% less immune reaction. Um, similar consequences have been found also with a hep A and hep B studies that they've done um, and how the less sleep has evoked a lower response in um, those individuals. The other thing, um, quite often, lots of documentation in shift workers of increasing um, immune problems such as cancer. And with each passing year of research in the forms of malignant tumours have been a link to insufficient sleep. So part of the problem is, as I was talking to you before, was about the parasympathetic nervous activation. And we want that to be in high drive um, to boost the immune system. The lower stress, so when we're sleeping and we're resting, the cortisol drops and adrenaline drops, which has an effect on immunity. The lower the inflammation, so that again, that's a decrease in the sympathetic nervous system and microbiome function. DNA repair as well, because when our um, DNA or chromosomes that make up the DNA are affected, that will also affect how we respond um, to our immunity because of the cells that are under that DNA information. There are also the, the ends of the DNA are called telomeres and stress affects the end of those, which then once it's like a, the cap on a shoelace and once that hard little cap is gone, it causes the DNA to unravel and um, be damaged. So um, that will affect how well you 
recover and how well your cells are boosting the immunity. So there's lots of things that we can do to boost um, better sleep. Sleep hygiene is a big one. So just looking at the way you sleep, what kind of environment you're in. So a nice cool dark room is most conducive to best sleep. Um, if it's too warm, your sleep isn't um, as adequate. So a cool room, dark, no distractions. So try not to look at mobile phones or screens because that white light will just trigger um, melatonin to decrease and then you're not going to sleep properly. Looking at the kind of mattress that you have and the pillow you're using will also affect how you're actually sleeping. So you want something that's perfect for your body shape. Um, sleep routine is or a nighttime routine, getting into something that's quite regular is going to be beneficial for your sleep as well. So thinking about starting to wind down before you go to bed, about an hour before is good. Often we'll set alarms to wake us up and get ready for the day. But, you know, not many of us would sort of set an alarm to sort of remind us to think about winding down at night. So something like that might help with a nighttime routine and trying to go to bed and waking up same time every day will put you in a nice routine as well other things that might um that you might do are things like stretching or meditation or reading a book or having a bath and just winding down trying to find all those things to help you just calm the nervous system down and then the daytime routine is quite important too so people that exercise or are more active throughout the day will tend to have a better sleep at night and you'll know that from your, for yourself like if you've had a very busy day you're going to be feeling more tired at night and you generally have, will have a, a better sleep looking at what you're eating throughout the day so a more healthy diet will decrease the amount of inflammation in your body which will also then help you sleep better um, Avoiding caffeine or alcohol close to bedtimes or large meals will also um, help the sleep. Caffeine's a really interesting one because it will bind to the same receptor sites as melatonin uh, binds to and it just will stop you from falling asleep, even if you are actually very tired because those receptor sites have been occupied by the caffeine. It won't actually allow you to fall asleep. Um, sunshine exposure during the day as well for you, your vitamin D and just the wake and sleep cycles is really important. So that is it for sleep. Andrew, back to you. Wonderful. I'm feeling a bit sleepy. Is anyone feeling a bit sleepy? <laughs> Jane, you look like you're about to fall asleep over there. Um, we're all relaxed now, which is wonderful. So, yeah, that was great. Some really good tips. Really, really good tips. The other thing we talked about air purification in your bedroom. Uh, you know, could because I think if you're asthmatic or or have respiratory issues, which obviously is going to impact sleep, you know, that can be immediately fixed by purifying the air in your bedroom. So just some things to consider. And at the end of this, there'll be an option to ask questions. And, and if you want to follow up on anything we've spoken about, we'll do that. Okay, so time to talk about food. Yum. Who likes eating? Yeah, me too. Love it. I just want to cover four nutritional essentials here. Obviously, you know this stuff, right? I'm looking at all of you right now. You know this stuff. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. So the question is going to always come back to you, why? What? what if, you're, if I'm going through stuff and go, yeah, I sort of know that, and if you're not doing it, that's the question. You need to go, okay, well, why? Because we eat for several reasons. We eat, number one, I hope, for enjoyment. And, you know, and if you're not enjoying it, then you need to fix that straight away. Number two, we eat for energy. Number three, we eat for for health. You know, those nutrients will will fortify and keep us keep us um, keep us living long and healthy. And Hippocrates said it two and a half thousand years ago: "Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food." Right. So it's there. Well, it used to be there. We'll talk about that in a sec. But I'm going to cover. Um, four essentials. The first one is metabolism. Uh, metabolism is, I'm going to give you the scientific definition. Uh, Denise uses lots of big words. I don't. I'm a footballer. Uh, I got beaten around the head way too many times. So this is my definition. Metab metabolism is the rate at which your body does stuff. 
S-T-U-F-F, okay? The rate at which your body does stuff, the rate at which your body creates energy, the rate at which your body burns fat, the rate at which your body strengthens uh, your immune system is all based on metabolism. And I think the best analogy I can give you is a fire. If you can imagine your metabolism like a fire that you want to keep burning all day. So you've got to start the fire, right? A healthy breakfast gets the fire started. I think we all know that. Yes, and I know there's lots of there's lots of theories around intermittent fasting and all sorts of things. But I'm just going to tell you what I know. I'm going to tell you what has worked for me. I'm going to tell you what what I encourage people to do, and that's eat eat regularly. You want to keep your fire burning, which means two things: you need to put quality fuel on, and you need to put fuel on it while it's still burning strong. If you had a campfire, you wouldn't wait until that fire's almost out before you put more fuel on it. You would put fuel on it while it's burning strong. And that's the key. So you're snacking. My recommendation is every 60 to 90 minutes, you would put a protein-based snack on. Why protein? Well, protein slows the release of sugar into your system. So you, you won't, you'll get much less of that that sugar spike. So add protein to each meal or snack. You'll see the toast... Put an egg on it. Don't put jam on it. Put an egg on it. Protein-based snacks, nuts and, you know, seeds and yogurt and good quality protein bars. Uh, there's lots of good good snacks you can have. You know, lunch with a salad and some chicken or fish, snacks and a healthy dinner. You know, you know all this sort of stuff, but the key is the regularity keeps the fire burning. Therefore, you've got energy, your immune system's strong, um, your body's able to, doesn't need to hold on to fat, so it much more readily lets go of body fat because it doesn't need to store it. When you starve or go on a diet, your body stores fat. And that's why people lose a lot of weight on a diet, put it back on because they screw up their metabolism. So so, you, so the key is eat before you're hungry and and. You know, we haven't talked a lot about water, but drink before you're thirsty. Don't wait. Hunger and thirst, it's too late. Keep putting it in, just small little bits to keep your body moving, keep the fire burning is essential number one. Essential number two is look after your cells. There are 37 trillion cells in your body and your health depends on the health of your cells. So if you consider a cell that looks like this, and obviously... You know, this is a very simplified version of a cell. Inside the cell that's surrounded and protected by a cell membrane, there's a, the nucleus which holds your DNA. There's a mitochondria. That's where all the chemical reactions take place. That's where fat's burnt. That's where energy is produced. That's where immune system is fortified. So in a healthy cell, which it, and the cell membrane is the key to your cell, okay, the cell membrane. Because if it's not semi-permeable, it won't allow nutrients to, to travel across and it won't allow waste products to get passed out. Now, the key to a healthy cell membrane is the type of fats we consume. If we consume too many processed foods, synthetic fats, this is what's going to happen. It's going to harden the cell membrane. It's going to stop those nutrients getting in. If those nutrients you already aren't getting into the cell, then there's no energy produced, no immune system. You're going to store fat. You're going to feel tired. You're going to feel lethargic. You're going to crave and you, and it's interesting that even if you're eating high quality foods, you know you might be taking a, a supplement or eating lots of fruit and vegetables. But if they can't get across the cell membrane into the cell, effectively they're wasted. So the key here is the good, the right balance between omega three and omega six fat. That's the key balance here. Omega three reduces inflammation. Omega six increases inflammation in the body. Obviously, they need to be in balance. Um, if you to give you a good way of remembering this, omega six from the sticks, omega three from the sea. Okay, so omega six is plant based, you know, and and a lot of the grains and and breads and rice and pasta and fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds are much higher in omega six, whereas much harder to get good quality omega three. Omega three. Really, the best source is fish, deep sea, cold water, fatty fish. Now, if you don't eat fish, you've got to find other sources of omega-3. That balance is critical because if you're only eating a little bit of omega-3 and a lot of omega-6, your cell membrane is, um, is going to be blocked, it's going to be hardened, there's going to be inflammation in your body, which is going to cause all sorts of issues. So the key is significantly reduce your processed carbohydrate. You all know that. 
and significantly increase your omega-3 consumption, which means, means eating more fish, flaxseed, foods that are high in omega-3, but also I strongly recommend an omega-3 supplement because it's very difficult to get enough. We'll talk more about supplements in a minute. In a minute. Essential number three, Denise has already spoken about the importance of your gut, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but 70% of your immune system is in your gut. Okay, therefore, if your gut's not healthy, you will not have a strong immune system, which you will end up sickly and run down. So you've got to build your immune system by looking after your gut. The things you eat, stress, processed food, are all going to destroy healthy gut bacteria. Healthy foods, fruits and vegetables, lots of probiotic foods that um, are probiotic Foods are going to help feed the healthy bacteria in your gut to keep that immune system nice and strong. The fourth essential, and I am going fast through this, but um, is, is how to protect yourself against free radical damage. Free radicals, um, and again, you can read that at the bottom. That's the scientific description of what free radicals are. Again, the footballer's descriptions of free radicals are they're bad and they attack the body. Okay, so you don't want a lot of free radicals. The, they, they happen when there's stress. And you, if you look at any of those eight pictures on the screen right now, you'll relate to probably one or more of those relationships, stress, money stress, electromagnetic stress, food and nutritional stress, environmental stress, uh, work stress, all those things causing stress on the body and a byproduct of your body's trying to get rid of or detoxify are these free radicals. And free radicals are nasty little critters that attack cells, attack the body, and are lead to some sort of disease. So the best way to fight free radicals is reduce stress. The things we focus on first and foremost, we talked about purifying your air and your water, two of the best ways to reduce free radicals. Eat less processed food, eat it in moderation. Have more fruits and vegetables and all those beautiful colours of different fruits and vegetables and quality proteins. They're the things, foods that are high in antioxidant, high in antioxidant, which they neutralize free radicals. So again, good, healthy food. But again, I certainly recommend a supplement. And, I'll, and I said, I'll talk about that in a sec. All right, that was fast. I know that was fast. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, and Ian's having a protein bar right now. Good on you, Ian. Good boy. Uh, but, yeah, there's so much to nutrition there really is. Uh, and I, if I've triggered or if I've sparked an interest, you know, we can talk about it at the other end or we can certainly make a time to discuss it in more detail. Okay. Denise, back to you. All righty. So exercise, obviously, is a big one for immunity and it improves immunity in many ways. If exercise was a pill, every doctor would prescribe it. Um, the, the amount of benefit that you get from exercise far outweighs any other prescriptive medication. So if we're just exercising, we're just going to be boosting our health um, so, so hugely. Um, and so some of the ways that that does that is by improving our circulation. And if we can get our blood flowing faster and better, more efficiently, we're going to improve our detoxification systems. And that's a great way to get rid of any foreign bodies that enter our body. Um, that movement also will help stimulate lymphatic drainage. And that's a major part of where our um, immune system resides. So we want that to be really optimal. Increases tissue oxygenation. So when you're exercising, you're going to be breathing faster and you're bringing more air into the body to oxygenate the cells and get them functioning optimally. Again, getting rid of what we don't need in the cells and getting the, the nutrients where we want them. Um, exercise also is a important activity in balancing the key neurotransmitters of the cell and that is our signal pathway. So if we're getting the messages across the cells um, communicating clearly, then we get the appropriate responses happening in the body. Exercise is really important to decrease stress and tension in the body, but also there is a balance, a fine tune with that, because 
if you overdo exercise, you're actually going to increase the amount of stress and inflammation in the body. So it's important the duration and the intensity and type of exercises that you are doing for immunity. And we'll talk about those in a second. Um, because of the increased blood flow and oxygenation, it's going to increase your mental clarity and memory and increasing bone strength and muscular strength, which just makes us a little bit more resilient to um, you know, foreign invaders as well. So there are quite a few things that we can do to, again, balance our immune response with the right exercises. The good news is that it doesn't really take much. 20 to 30 minutes of light to moderate exercise per day is enough to, to get your um, immune system functioning optimally. And things like yoga, stretches, breathing exercises are wonderful. We're going to do, a, if we've got time, just a one minute deep breathing exercise at the end of this little uh, section here. Um, we need to be moving often. So especially with a lot of work moved indoors now and online, we're probably sitting down a lot more than we were typically. So again, setting an alarm on your phone or computer just to remind yourself, you know, every 20, 30, 40, an hour, just get up, stretch the body, just do some twists, roll the head around, relax the shoulders, just keep moving. We don't want to get stuck into these sort of fixed positions where we then get, you know, tight muscles and joints. Um, and so as I was talking about with the intensity, you just want to limit the amount of high intensity interval training that you do. So that's the HIT, popular HIT training, because that does increase the amount of stress in your body, it spikes insulin um, and cortisol and adrenaline. So if you're doing that for long times and often, you will compromise your immune um, response. And so one of the really easy exercises to do is a deep breathing exercise. And if we've got a minute, I'd really love to just sort of coach you through this because even just in one minute, the amount of response that you can bring into your body is quite huge. It will tap into your parasympathetic nervous system. So whenever you're feeling stressed, if you just take one minute to deep, real, to breathe really deeply, it just resets that nervous system. And it's just as simple as inhaling, which we all know how to breathe, inhale quite deeply to fill the lungs with oxygen, holding the breath, exhaling that out, hold it again at the exhalation and just repeating that process. So typically, if you did just one minute where you're holding an inhale for three seconds and then hold for another three, exhale for six and hold for three, if you did that six times, that's your minute. So um, do you want to try? Can we just sort of try? Have we got a minute just to try that? So I'll count you through it. So you're going to inhale. So breathe really deeply. Inhale. So take about three seconds to take the breath in and then hold the breath here for three, two, one, and then exhale long and deeply over about six seconds. At the end of the exhalation, just hold there for three seconds. And let's do it again. Let's do four of these. Inhale, hold the breath. Exhale, hold the breath. Good, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold. Exhale. Hold. Just one more. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Hold. Good, and just go back to your normal breath. Just notice how you feel, even just that one minute breath, does you, do you feel just a little bit calmer, a little bit slower? You can just think a little bit clearer. So, you know, 
it really doesn't take long just to reset your mind and focus if you're feeling a bit flustered. Thank you, Denise, again. That was great. Just really practical, useful stuff that we can all do. So thank you. So last thing, just to, just to wrap, this was a really fast one, um, and then we'll open it up, is really just talking about supplementation, why, why I think we need to supplement. Some of you are probably doing this already. Um, some of you might be asking, why do I need to supplement when really I should be getting all of the nutrients I need through food? I mean, I don't know how many people agree with that. You should get it through food. Yep, you should. The question is, are you? The question is, number one, do you eat all of the amount of serves of fruit and vegetables you know you should be eating? What is it, five to eight serves a day? I think, and you've got to get all five colours. Are you doing that every single day? And be honest. Ask yourself the question. The second question we need to ask ourselves is, do you truly know what's in the food that you're currently eating? Do you know the nutritional content? Is it the same as it was 100 years ago? Is, it, is, is that carrot you're eating or that fruit you're eating or that banana you're eating or that meat you're eating, does it have the nutrients that you, need, you know you need to consume? And the third question, the third thing to consider is in the day that we now the time we live in, the increased need for nutrients through stress and pollution and COVID-19 and all the other things are significantly increasing our need for these nutrients. So the real question is, are we getting you know, enough? And, and the Heart Foundation is suggesting that only 5.1% of Australian adults have an adequate usual daily intake of fruit and vegetables. Okay, so that means 95% of people are not. And even that five, again, I still question that 5.1%. Are they, you know, the, of the daily intake of fruit and vegetables, you know, what's the nutrient content of those fruit and vegetables? Is it enough for, for optimal, optimal well-being and joyful longevity? So why do you supplement? You supplement because... You want to make sure your body has all it need, everything it needs to fight and keep you healthy, right? And do you need it? You'll never know unless you don't do it and at some point you end up sick, okay? No one, none of us want to end up sick. So my suggestion is you would take a high-quality supplement now. Start now while you're feeling great. Keep yourself feeling great. Now, I'm not here to endorse any particular uh, type of any brand, uh, I use a great brand and if you want to know what that is, ask me. I'm not here to sell products. But what I'm here to do is saying if you go to the chemist or the pharmacy or the drugstore and you buy cheap supplements, they're doing more harm than good and they're not getting absorbed into your body, okay? So don't shortchange it. Don't negotiate the price on quality product. You need... In my opinion, you need certified organic plant-based, raw plant-based material. That's what you need, yeah? You, if it's not plants, don't even go near it. If it's synthetic, flush it down the toilet. If it's not organic, well, how, again, with the same with fruit and vegetables, how do you know what's in it? It needs to, it needs to be produced with the best of nature and the best of science because there's some science that goes into making sure that it's optimally harvested and at the right time and the most nutrients are, are in it but using obviously the highest quality ingredients. And, and if you can find an organisation that does the whole process from the seed in the ground all the way through to, to the supplement, um, then that's obviously going to be the best possible product because you want to have it as close as possible to real food, okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. To wrap up a little bit here is, is just say we've gone through some stuff and we've gone through it really, really quickly. Um, hopefully you've been taking notes and there might be some things, yeah, 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 yeah that's relevant for me. I need to know more about that. Uh, does anyone have any questions, comments, um, want to share something that's worked for them or helping them build their immune system. Is there anyone that... So take yourself... Yeah, Anya, do you want to take yourself off mute and share? Thanks, Andrew. So um, one thing that... A real positive that's come out of the whole isolation for me is that I've really taken the opportunity to just rest and reset, 
which is something that we don't give ourselves permission to do often. And we've literally been given permission to do that. So I've just jumped on that and embraced it, which is wonderful. And I'm on day 13 of a 30 day um, detox. So I'm feeling fantastic. But I, I really detoxed the house as well. Like I took everything out of my bedroom. I got the carpet steam clean with environmentally friendly products. Rah, rah, rah. This improvement in my sinuses alone mm. is just incredible. And my energy levels, et cetera. Wonderful. Um, you know, it's given me more time to do things like exercise, listen to meditations and all that sort of thing. So it's just, it's just incredible. I'm actually really grateful for this time. But I wanted to ask, with um, air purification, are salt lamps effective in the bedroom? And also, I drink a lot of water, but I don't use a water purifier, and it is something that has been on my mind to get for ages. So can you recommend one, please? Yep. Um, so uh, firstly, and that's great. Good on you. I think everyone could take a lesson from that to just purify and detoxify. Um, in terms of air purification a salt lamp yes will will have an impact will it purify your air mm, no but it will certainly uh neutralize some of the stuff that's in the air unless okay. you might want to comment on yeah. that well. <coughs> um as for water purification and you let me <clears throat> let me have a chat to you afterwards great thanks andrew because yes i would 100 percent purify your water because yep. in our tap water, you don't want to be drinking. Yeah, absolutely. And I drink bucket loads of water. Yeah. So really, yeah. And the more, see, the more water, tap water we're drinking, in, and we hear that you've got to drink lots of water, water is toxic. And one of the reasons why we drink water is to detoxify our body. You know, it helps flush toxins out. But if you're drinking tap water, then you're putting toxins in, and it's mm. sort of almost negating. Mm. Um, so, yeah, but we'll, I'll talk you to you. You just have to look inside your kettle and look at the colour of it to know what, <laughs> what yeah. the water is doing. 100%. Nightmare. I went away on a um, two-week business trip and didn't have my water purifier with me, which um, I've, I've got and worked with Andrew before, and I was just dying to get back to that good taste in water. So recommend you give something a go and a try. Awesome. Mm. Thanks, Ian. So, um, I might, Denise, do you want to just touch on the salt lamp? Yeah. The impact of the salt lamp? Um, I don't really know the science behind it too much. I do have one in my house. Um, I sort of feel that it's doing something. Just I like the colour of it. I feel sort of calm with it on and, um, you know, the science behind it sort of sold me on, on it when I first bought it, but I never really looked into it properly to see if it actually is true. Um, part of me sort of feels it is working. You can feel the salt on, on the outside of the lamp, um, but as far as the amount of area that that's actually making a change to, I don't know. I, I mean, I have got a, a air filter and I feel that, that that's just doing so much better. And especially with my son, with his sinuses and the immune problem that he had when he was younger. Um, yeah, I definitely think the air purifier just kills so much more over a, a salt lamp. Um, I wouldn't, if you were going to make an investment, you would, I would go over the air filter rather than buying a salt lamp. But, you know, if you haven't got that kind of disposable income, having a salt lamp on your desk in a, in a closed sort of small workspace probably does add some benefit. Yeah. It will I, definitely help. help. Yeah. The air um, purifiers, yep. do, they, do they make the room moist and therefore potentially mouldy or am I thinking of something else? No, I think about you a cubic yard. I remember doing things when the boys were little when they were sick and the, when you come in in the morning and the windows would be covered with condensation. I think about a humidifier, not a purifier. What a purifier ah, will do. That's what but, I'm thinking of. Um, yeah. See you, Felicia. Um, what what, what uh, a purifier will do will take out uh, dust, dust mites, chemicals. It just effectively takes yeah. all the stuff out of the air that you don't want in your lungs. It's right. not It's not changing the temperature of the room. It's not changing the humidity in the room. All it's doing is it's uh, cyclical. What it's doing is it's just moving the air and bringing the air through the unit, which is in the unit. The one that I use has got three different filters. So it's going through three different filters, taking out odour, taking out particles, taking out those minute um the menu, they're the ones that are causing a lot of the, the issues mm -hmm. are the, the ones, the, the, the tiny, 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 tiny microscopic 
things that you know you, you don't even see they're the ones so no yeah. a pure a good purifier yeah. but again i know i can talk to you about that as well yeah excellent thank you so much guys it's great the product thought about air purifying is um, using plants so there's a lot of plants that actually help um neutralize the, the i just wanted to say something about the, the um diet so i have an autoimmune disease and interestingly when i was very sick and i was working away and i'm not i've never been a great carnivore and so tough meat and you know if it's not expensive meat, I probably won't eat it, basically. So like expensive tastes. But my teeth are like cows. They're completely flat. So I can't really chew on tough meat. And I was working abroad and I hardly eating anything. And I was really concerned about the lack of protein I was taking in. But within the fortnight from you know, when I went there, people were really worried about me going to work because I couldn't actually walk very well because my knees were in such a bad state because my autoimmune disease manifests mainly as rheumatoid arthritis. And my, my hands, I couldn't clench and I couldn't straighten my hands within the fortnight my hands were fine I was moving fine and I wondered about you know there's a, there's a number of things that all changed during that that fortnight that was the lack of bread lack of alcohol lack of caffeine to some extent increase in water and, and I went back to the diet I used to eat as a kid so as a child in 1960s Scotland my preferred foods were raw vegetables and fruit so for me it's actually a high vegetable diet I love fish, so I eat more fish than I would ordinary meat. But that is what makes it for me. That's what Gillian's saying for yeah. her. Meat is not it's the best source of protein. About the sleep patterns. I've really linked into the whole thing about making my sleep, it doesn't matter how long I sleep for, ideally seven and a half hours, but it's to do with the 90-minute cycles. So it's multiples of sleep cycles, and that makes a huge difference. So I had to work during the day and during the night a couple of weeks ago because I just had a contract in the U.S., and had to have meetings, eight hour meetings for their time. And I was still working in Papua New Guinea, so I was still having to do my eight hours during the day there. And by splitting it into 90 minute cycles for that short period of time, absolutely fine. So I could do like four and a half hours sleep and then an hour and a half later on. And then that would maintain my, my two 24 hour days sort of cycles of work. And it was, it was really interesting that whole, so it's all about the mindset as well about having this, okay, this is now, this is what I'm going to be doing today. But having the 90 minute cycles has made a huge difference to my, um, the, the, the well, the, 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 the regenerative effect of, of sleep for me. So that's the two things I want to say. Thanks. Well, well, thank you for sharing. I've got it here. What about protein in plants? Yeah, so um, there's lo lots of protein in plants. There's some great, there's some great plant based proteins, you know, uh, nuts and seeds and legumes and lentils and yeah you've just got to make sure with plant-based protein that you're getting all your essential amino acids so mm -hmm. you've got to, it's all about the combinations of um of the plant-based foods to make sure your body's getting everything it needs sorry andrew I, my computer went onto a completely different screen and i couldn't get back to unmute myself but no it wasn't a question per se i guess i was just commenting as okay. the, as jillian was talking because she was saying you know she she eats a lot of fruit and vegetables, but she doesn't like protein. And I was kind of saying, well, there's a lot of good protein in yeah, for sure. Diet. Yeah, absolutely. There's great options. So the other thing that's going to limit you is your imagination and your creativity and your ability to go out and find good, good real foods and do some research and get some great recipes that you love and you set. You know, it's it's not hard to do. Yeah, and often the um. The combination of the protein mix and the amino acids in plant-based foods is as good as animal-based foods. It's just the absorption is slightly lower. So um, you just have to, like Andrew was saying, be mindful of what you're eating those foods with to help boost the absorption of those plant proteins compared to something that's more absorbed like the animal proteins. And also, if I can sort of touch on a couple of questions there, Alison's asking about what a microbiome is. And basically that is how your gut, the microorganisms in your gut and um, the environment of that. So eating a very diverse 
plant-based protein is going to help boost the amount of microorganisms in your gut. And the more diverse that is, the more resilient you are basically to different foods and organisms that come in as a portal entry into our body that way. So a healthy microbiome makes you sort of have a healthier immune response given that you know 70% of our immunity is in our gut. So we want to sort of get that really flourishing and with lots of different um, organisms. And if you think about it, it's the oldest um, organisms. They're, you know, the, these parasites and microorganisms are millions of years old and they're already sort of just passed down from generation to generation. So often what your mother's microbiome or gut function is like that gets passed down to her children yeah andrew can i ask you one more question please yes you may when you, when you spoke about um the cell membranes and how that they, they become hardened if that has happened how do you mend or repair that you need to two things significantly reduce inflammatory food that you're eating which is omega-6 and anything anything processed effectively because processed food uses um, trans fat, which is a hardening, it hardens food to extend shelf life. So really anything out of a packet is you want to limit and, and breads, rice, pastas, that sort of stuff and significantly increase your omega-3 intake. The omega-3 over, and over time, over a relatively short period of time because that cell membrane is, is that is you know at the um what's the word it's impacted by what you're consuming you know so if you're cons depending on the fats you eat that's all the body has to make your cell membrane so the the more high quality fats you're consuming the quicker those cells will restore to healthy semi-permeable membrane so that's why that's why i really recommend a good quality supplement for omega-3 uh, and if you don't if you're not adverse to fish Fish oil is the best, is the most effective source of omega-3. Fish oil supplement? De deep, or supplement? Yeah, a fish, a fish oil supplement. Yeah. 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 It's just not high enough in just in fish alone. You have to eat a lot of fish to get, so the supplements are more concentrated source of it. Yep, great. So, Thank absolutely. you. You're welcome. And you will know, you'll know when your cells are working. Your energy, what, for me, what I found, I used to get eczema. If you've got any inflammatory condition, whether it's an, um, a respiratory issue or skin issue or swelling or anything Pain like that. Yeah. I, got, I used to get really bad eczema here and here and here. And um, within two weeks of me really su supplementing with good quality supplements and omega-3 was gone and that was 15 years ago. And I tried every medication under the sun, mm. cream, every tablet, every horrible chemical-based medication you could try. None mm. of it worked long term because it's not supposed to work long term so yes thank you I'll just give the fish supplements try and find a really um one where you know it's organic and it's actually going to, there's a few which work really really well and others that don't and if you've got an autoimmune disease i'd often it'll take up to 12 weeks before you start to see some real benefit um yeah. for me when i started with fish oils after that trip to rwanda i found that um for about 11 months, it, it managed to drop on my medication by um, two thirds. So it made a huge difference. But unfortunately, I then started to have a really bad reaction to it in my gut. So I started to have really, I couldn't, I couldn't continue with fish oil. So that's when I had to change what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it can affect your gut as well. I guess. The best thing is um, these sort of guidelines. It's best really just to notice how your body responds to foods and supplements the best. Like we can give you a guideline, but if it's not working for you, you're the best judge of um, what you think is best for your body. Yep, totally. Anyway, look, what we might do, because it's nearly 12 o'clock, I think it's nearly 12 o'clock for everyone on this call. Yeah. Our American friend's gone. So, um, <laughs> so we might we might wrap this up. So thank you all for being part of this. Yes, thank you, everyone. And, and hopefully you can take on, on board some of the stuff and implement it and it can help you build that immune system to the point where you are strong and happy and healthy and I mean, fabulous for the rest of your long, wonderful life of joyful longevity. Mm -hmm.